live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering IBM Think 2019. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at IBM Think 2019. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. We're in San Francisco this year at the newly rejuged Moscow News Center. Welcoming to theCUBE for the first time, Yosef DeFries, Director of IBM Cloud Databases. Yosef, it's great to have you on the program. Thank you very much, great to be here. Great to be here. So, as we were talking before we went live, this is, I was asking you what you're excited about for yeah. this year's IBM Think, only the second annual IBM Think, this right. big merger of a number right. of shows. Right, right. Um, Kind of day minus one, kind of T minus one, yeah. everything really kicks off tomorrow. Talk to us about some of the things that you're working on. You've been at IBM for a long time, mm -hmm. but cloud managed databases. Yep. Let's talk value there for the customers. Yeah, definitely. Cloud managed databases really, you know, at its core is about simplifying adoption of, of cloud provided services and reducing the capital expense that, that comes along with uh, developing your application. So fundamentally what we are trying to do is abstract the overhead that is associated with running your own systems. Whether it's the infrastructure management, whether it's the network management, whether it's the configuration and deployment of your databases, our, our collection of services really is about uh, streamlining time to value of uh, accessing and building against your databases. So we're, we're really focused on is allowing the developer to focus on their business critical applications, their objectives, and really what they're paid for. They're paid to build applications. They're not paid to maintain systems. Uh, when we talk about the CIO office, the CTO office, you know, they're looking at costs, they're looking at ways to reduce overall expenditures. And what we're able to provide with cloud managed databases is the ability not to have to staff an IT team, not to have to maintain and pay for infrastructure, not have to uh, procure licenses, what have you, everything that goes into standing up and managing those systems yourself, we provide that and we provide it on a consumption-based method. So you pay, basically you pay for what you use and we have various ways in which you can uh, interact with your databases and the charges that are associated with that. But it, it really is, again, about alleviating all of that overhead and, and that expense that is associated with running systems yourself. 15 years ago, when you were back to, right, you know, before you started with IBM, yeah. it was obviously you had IBM DB2, you had Oracle, um, SQL, SQL Server. Server. Yeah, yeah. I, guess, I guess MySQL was around mm -hmm. you know, back then. The LAMP stack was building out the internet. But databases were pretty boring yeah. back yeah, then. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it exploded right. and, and the NoSQL movement happened in a huge way. Mm -hmm. You know, it coincided with the da big data movement. What, what happened? You know, I think as we saw the, the space of this technology evolve the, and the variety of different kind of use cases cropping up, uh, you know, the, the development community kind of respond to that. And, and really what we try to do with our portfolio is provide that variety of database technology solutions to meet any number of different use cases. And we kind of like to think about it broken down into two categories, your, your primary data stores. This is where your applications are writing and reading uh, the data that has been stored. And then, particularly to your point, this is where we what we call the auxiliary data so services, for, for example. These are your in-memory caches, your message brokers, your, your search indexes, what have you. Uh, this, there's a plethora of different database technologies out there today that plug into any number of different use cases an application developer is, is attempting to fulfill. And, and more often than not, they're, they're using more than one database at a time. And, and really what we're trying to do at IBM with our, our cloud managed database offering is provide a variety of those data services and database technologies to meet a variety of those use cases, whether it's mixing and matching or different kind of application workloads or what have you. We like to provide our customers with the choices uh, that are out there today in the community at large. So many choices, and yeah. am I hearing that, that it's kind of horses for courses? I mean, you got things like, like even niches like you know Cumulo with fine grain you know security, yeah. uh, 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 a couch base obviously, and mm -hmm. you get this one scales, and and then this one's easy to use. You think take Mongo for text, really easy to yeah, use. Yeah, exactly. So sort of different specialized use cases. Um, how do you sort of squint through, and how does IBM sort of match the right 
characteristics with the right technology? It's really, it's two prong. It's about understanding your user base, understanding and listening to your customers, and you know, really internalizing what are the use cases that they're looking to fulfill. It's also being in tune with the database technology in the market today. It's, it's understanding where there are trends, understanding where there are new ca mm -hmm. use cases cropping up. And it's about building a, a deep enough engineering and operations team where we can quickly spin up these new offerings and, and again provide that technology to our end customers. Uh, and it's about working with our customers as well and, and understanding their use cases and then sometimes making recommendations on what database technology or combination of databases would be best suited for their, for their mm -hmm. objectives. So I'm curious, one of the things that you mentioned in terms of what the developer's day-to-day -day job should be, is this almost IBM's um, approach to sort of aligning with the developer role and enabling it in kind of new ways? It, it is really about, uh, I think, uh, having sympathy and, and delivering on solutions in regards to that sympathy for the pains that they'd otherwise endured 10, 15 years ago when the notion of cloud managed anything really wasn't a thing yet or it was just starting to emerge. And you know, IBM in-house has run their own systems for years and years, obviously. And, and you know, the folks on my team, you know, that have come from other companies, they know that the pain, uh, what pain is involved in trying to run services. So, it, like I said, it's a little bit, out of, it's, it's a bit out of sympathy. No, it's it's a bit out of knowing what your users uh, need in a cloud managed service. Whether again, it's security or availability, or redundancy, you name it. it. It's about kind of coming around to the other side of the table and saying, I sat where you once sat, and we know what you need out of your data services, so you know, trust in us to provide that, that for you. Are there, are there, how are the requirements different? I, I mean, things like recovery and resiliency, yeah. You know, do I need acid compliance in this mm -hmm. in this new world? Maybe you could. Yeah, and it's funny that, that that's a good question. In that we don't necessarily deal so much with database specific requirements. Mm. Um, again, as I mentioned, we try to provide a variety of different database technologies, and by and large, the users are going to know what they need, what combinations that they will need, and we'll work with them if they're you know nav they're navigating their way through it. Really, where we see more of the requirements these days are around the management characteristics, as you cited. Are they highly available? Uh, are they backed up? What's your disaster recovery policy? What security policies do you have in place? What compliance, so on and mm -hmm. so forth. It's really about you know, presenting the overall package of that managed solution, not so much you know, whether the database is going to be highly available versus consistent replication and what have you. I mean, that's in there, and that's part of what we engage with our customers about. Uh, but also where we like to put a lot of emphasis is, is on uh, providing those recognized database technologies so that there's a community behind them, there's an opportunity for the, the users to understand what it is that they need beyond just what we can, we can sell them. It's really about selling the value proposition of, of again, the management characteristics of the, of the services. So who do you see as a, the competition? I mean, obviously the other big, the two, the two big cloud providers, AWS and, and Azure, yep. right? You're, you're competing with them Definitely. for the quality of offerings. Maybe mm -hmm. talk about how you fit. And Google's another one, or Oracle's another emerging one, even mm -hmm. Alibaba is, is yep. you know, catching up quite a bit. And you know, it, it really feels like a neck-to-neck neck neck race, you know, day after day. That, you know, we, we, the way we try to approach our portfolio is focusing on deep, broad, and secure. Deep being that there are a core set of database technologies where we're building the database itself. DB2, Cloudant, which is based off yep. of Couchbase, or excuse me, CouchDB. Uh, and then broad, again, as I've been mentioning, having a variety of different database technologies. And then secure across the board, whether it's secure in how we run those systems, secure in how we certify them through external compliance uh, certifications, or secure in, in, in how we integrate with security-based tooling that our users can take advantage of. And regarding our competitors, it, it really is, you know, one week it may be a, a new big data at scale type of database technology. Another, another day it might be, or another week, it might be deeper integrations into the platform. Uh, it might be new open source database technologies. It might be a new proprietary database technology. But we're, you know, it's a constant, uh, like I say, race to, to who can have the remote, most robust portfolio. Developers like teenagers, they're fickle. Yeah, that too, right? that too. And we've got to be quick and, you know, you know, to respond to those demands. Yeah. In this age of hybrid multi-cloud, where the average company has five plus, private cloud, public cloud, uh, through inertia, through acquisition, et cetera, where is IBM's advantage there as companies are, I think we heard a stat the other day, Dave, that in 2018, 80% of companies migrated data and apps from public cloud. So in terms mm -hmm. of this 
reality that companies live in this multi-cloud, where is IBM's advantage there? And, and where does your approach to cloud managed services really yeah. differentiate IBM's capabilities? Really there's, there's for the last couple of years, a, a tremendous amount of investment on building on the Kubernetes open source platform. And even in particular to our cloud managed database services, we have been developing and have been recently releasing a number of different databases that run on a platform that we've developed against Kubernetes. It's a, it's a platform that allows us to orchestrate deployments, uh, you know, deletions of databases, backups, high availability, platform level integrations, all, all a number of different things. And what that has allowed us to do when concerning a hybrid type strategy is it makes our platform more portable. So Kubernetes is something that can run in the cloud, it can run in a private cloud, it can run on premise, and, and this, this platform we're developing is something that can be deployed, which we do today for public, public cloud consumption, which can also be packaged up and deployed into a private cloud type environment, and ultimately is, is portable in, in, its, in its leveraging of the Kubernetes technology itself. So we're not, we're not hamstringing ourselves to purely public cloud type services or only private cloud type services. We want to have something that is abstracted enough that again it can move around to these different kind of environments. How so. important is open source and, and how important is it you, for you to commit to the different open source projects? Yeah. I mean there's so many and yeah. you, got, you got no limited resources. So how do you uh, Open that? source is really critical both in, in what we're building and what we're also offering. Um, you know, the, the, as we've talked about our users out there, they know what they often want, or sometimes we nudge them to the right or to the left, but, but generally speaking, it's around all the open source technologies, and you know, whatever may be trending for that current month is oftentimes what we're getting requested for. So it could be Postgres, it could be uh, RabbitMQ, it could be Elasticsearch, what have you, and, and really we put a lot of emphasis on embracing the open source community, providing those database technologies to our customers, and then it allows, it allows our customers to kind of benefit from the community at large too. We don't become, again, the, the, the sole provider of education and information about that technology. We, we are able to expose the whole community to our, to our customers, and they're able to take advantage of that. A lot of, I hear a lot of complaints sometimes, particularly from folks that might you know, list themselves in a marketplace for one cloud or another, that they feel like the, the primary cloud vendor might be nudging uh, the customer mm -hmm. into their proprietary yeah. database. Uh, what's IBM's position on that? Um, is that, is that fair? Is that overblown? You know, uh, we obviously have proprietary tech, particularly with DB2, mm -hmm. uh, and that's something we're going to continue investing in, and it's what we view as one of our kind of strate strategic top priority database technologies. Uh, we're very active developers in the couch community as well. Uh, wouldn't consider that proprietary, but again, back to the point couch of- CouchDB, you know, you're kind of the, as the steward of CouchDB. Exactly, cloud, exactly. Right, right okay. exactly. Yeah. Um, but again, firm believers in open source, and you know, we, we want to give those, those opportunities to our customers to avoid those vendor lock-in type situations. We actually have quite a lot of interest from our EU customer base. And you know, by and large, EU policies uh, around antitrust and what have you, they tend to gravitate towards the open source technology because they know it's, it's again portable. They can be using Postgres by IBM one month and if they you know, no longer are satisfied with that, they can take their Postgres workloads and move them to another cloud provider. Ideally, they're coming from the other cloud providers on to IBM. Well, I should be, and I should be more specific, I mean, just in fairness. I mean, Dynamo is often sure. know, cited. Uh, I suppose Google Spanner, although that's sort of a, more of a niche, mm -hmm. you know, specialized yeah. database. If, I'm, if I understand it correctly, you're, I mean, DB2 is, you know, that's a hardcore transaction sure. system. So yeah. you, you're not going to confuse that with, with, I don't think, anyway, CouchDB, although, who knows, maybe there are some use cases there. But, but it sounds like you're not sort of nudging them to your you know, proprietary, certainly DB2 proprietary, and you know, CouchDB is you know, one of many options yeah. that you offer. Well, certainly DB2 is one of our, our core products for our database portfolio, and we do want to push our customers to, to DB2. If it where, makes sense. Exactly, where, where it makes sense, and, and where there's demand for it, and if it doesn't make sense, or there's not demand, we'll, we'll offer up any number of the other databases that we also offer. Hmm. Excellent, you have last question. Sure. As, the, as uh, IBM Think, the second annual, kicks off really tomorrow, 
for this developer audience that you were talking about a lot in our conversation, mm -hmm. what are some of the exciting things that they're going to hear? Any sort of, obviously not breaking news, but mm -hmm. where would you advise the developer community who's attending IBM Think to go to learn more about yeah. cloud managed databases and how they can really mm -hmm. become far more efficient, sure. do their jobs better? You know, databases are hard, plain and simple. Uh, they're particularly hard to run uh, and, and developers who are not necessarily you know, database admins, they're not database operators that they want to focus on building applications, uh, are going to want to find solutions that alleviate that overhead of, of running those systems themselves. So you know, to, to your question, we've got sessions all throughout the week where we're talking about our cloud in, uh, offering and, and, and the future of where we're going with that. Uh, we've got a couple different sessions around our IBM Cloud database portfolio. This is a lot of the open source database technologies we're running. Uh, we have demos in the Solutions Center and DB2 is splattered all around the conference as well. So there's, there's lots of different uh, sessions focused on talking about uh, the, uh, the value proposition of IBM's cloud managed database portfolio across the board. A lot of opportunity for, yeah. opportunity for learning. Well, Yosef yeah. DeFries, thank you so much for joining Dave and me on theCUBE this afternoon. Thank you very much, it was great. Thank you. And for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from IBM Think 2019 day one. Stick around, we'll be right back with our next guest.